Okay, hello everyone. This is a production from the RTL team. Okay, as a starter, we are going to watch a recording showing the functionality of the Embarcadero Beacon Fence component, recreating the offices in Spain. We will ask the system to lead us from the offices entrance to the meeting room. In the way, we will change the recommended path for another one, so we'll see how the system redirects us, offering an alternative route. We will get into a college office and finally we'll get our destination, where an arrival event will advertise us about it. In the video, we will show all the time the recording of the real world as well as the map created by the Beacon Fence Company showing our position. Enjoy it, thanks! Hello everyone and welcome to the Code Rage 10. I'm Jorge Alcalde from the RTL team and I'm going to talk about some technical features of the Beacon Fence Company. Some good practice and points to have in consideration to obtain really good results. Therefore, be able to develop a robust application. Okay, first of all, we are going to turn back of defining what a Bluetooth beacon is. A beacon is a Bluetooth low energy device that is continuously telling to the world, here I am and this is my name. This advertisement is produced through the advertised data packet, where all this data is encapsulated as UIG, major and minor, allowing any device that receives that information to identify that beacon, having the possibility of calculating an estimated distance to it without being paired or connected, thanks to its received signal strength indicator loss, RSSA. A geofence is a virtual perimeter for a real-world geographical area. A geofence can be a predefined set of boundaries, like school attendance zones or neighborhood boundaries, when the location aware device of a location-based service user in turns or exit a geofence. The device receives a generated notification. Geofencing is used today at triangulating the GPS position of a device. Putting the two together, the idea is to use a beacons to implement a geofencing within a building. Think of a shopping mall or an industrial environment, a museum or a school. So, Beacon Fence enables developers to take proximity beacons to the next level by adding precision spatial location awareness to their application both indoor and outdoor. The signals from beacons is tremendously noisy, especially indoors. Radio signals, jumps and bounce around constantly, 
walls, electrical devices, electrical wiring, different mobile devices, Wi-Fi, and even people becomes in observation, interference, or diffraction of the signal. So, beacon standard is not primarily designed for indoor positioning. It is in principle focused in proximity. A really advanced noise as most in algorithm as well as some recommended practice are needed depending on the purpose for our beacon fence application. Different steps we must bear in mind when we try to approximate our input beacon data measures. There are some webs from beacons provider where we can find complete information about it. So here I am going to highlight those specification and steps that I find the most important. The first and most important of all steps is the beacon calibration. The calibration of the beacon TX power. A beacon transmission includes a transmitted power field that indicates how strong the signal should be at a known distance. Beacons must be calibrated by measuring the signal level RSSA at this reference distance and then configurating the beacon to transmit reference value. Without a proper beacon calibration, we can get a really wrong estimate distance resulting in a mistaken position estimation, mainly because the algorithm can take as a distant beacon a nearby one and vice versa. Use the strongest transmitter power level supported by your beacon if possible and if the use case allows for it. Stronger signal levels mean higher signal to noise ratios and better distance estimates. Use the highest transmission frequency supported by your beacon. The more the advertising packets received by the mobile device, the more samples it will have to average to filter out noise. Use power beacons where possible. So that you can transmit a high power and a high frequency without worrying about battery life. Place beacons in a location with a clear line of scene to where the signal will be received. If in a crowded location placements, overhead works better than those at ground level. Place beacons wherever there is an intersection in a path. This could be beginning or ending of a corridor, corners, room, entrance, etc. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you uh, the places where we had locate our beacons, and as I recommended before, we locate them, some of them on the on the roof, as you saw. And for example, especially for this corridor, I recommend to put one of them on the beginning of the corridor, another one on the end of the corridor, and no more distance of 10 meters. As you saw, I put if you in each transition or or the path you are you want to to uh, positioning, then this is a nice idea to put a beacon so on the on the top of a door or in each corner you find so as you see in this video where we locate ours another corridor one at the beginning or the end as you s as you see uh, and the other on the roof there another beacon yes in our demo we were using three beacons for the location algorithm is a is it's quite enough for the corridors and if you have a an empty space like this one is better if you use more four or five look another one for the beginning of this corridor or ending if you are planning on deploying an application for a specific place, make sure that you have a distance estimation formula optimized for that model. Make use of the SPC, Signal Propagation Constant, property from Beacons Manager option of the Beacon Fence component. SPC for different environments taken from the book Zigbee Wireless Network and Transavers we can see in the attached. Let's note that the SPC property will take the reciprocal value from those exposed on the table. 
An indoor positioning system is a solution to locate objects or people inside a building using radio waves, magnetic fields, acoustic signal, or other sensor information collected by a mobile device, in our case, Bluetooth Low Energy. As a main tool to solve this problem in our component, we have made use of this spe special probabilistic filter called Particle Filter Location, also known as a Monte Carlo Location, MCL. MCL is an algorithm for robots to localize using a particle filter given a map to the environment. The algorithm estimates the position on an orientation of a robot as it moves and sends the environment. The algorithm uses a particle filter to represent the distribution of likely states, which each particle represents a possible state. This is a hypothesis of where the robot is. The algorithm typically starts with an uniform random distribution of particles over the configuration space, meaning the robot has no information on where it is and assumes it is equally likely to be at any point in space. Whenever the robot moves, it shifts the particles to the predict its new state after the movement. Whenever the robot sends something, the particles are resampled based on recursive Bayesian estimation. This is how well the actual sense data correlate with the predicted state. Ultimately, the particle should cover us towards the actual position of the robot. So, it is obvious that for our purpose, the mentioned robot will be a Bluetooth LE mobile user and the sense data the estimated day stands to each beacon. Hello there, this is Ivan Gracia from RTL team and I'm going to introduce you on fencing components. The first thing we need uh, is to get the fencing components into the IDE. To get fencing components, we should use Get It Package Manager. We can find it on the Tools menu. Once open, you just need to press Install on, on the fence component and let Get It download and install on the IDE. Once the installation has finished, close get it and create a new multi device application. In order to see the fencing components, you should select Android, iOS, or OS X as the platform for the project. So we can look for fencing in the tool palette and we should show su see two components become math fencing and become sound fencing also the package came with two demos application one for each component we just need to open documents embarcadero studio 17 Catalog repository, become fence, samples. If you don't see anything there, it's because there is a zip file with the demos. You just need to unzip it on the same folder and you will see one folder for each demo. So, the first one is for the become Mac fencing component that is a, a map fencing application that allows you to to run several maps in the device and the second sample is for the sound fencing component is a more simple application just showing events for four beacons Later we'll see them working. Ok, 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you how Beacon Sound's fencing component works. So this component allows us to define zones and include beacons inside those zones in order we we'll get events for those beacons at the finest zones. To better see how it works, I'm going to create a simple application where we are going to change the color of a rectangle that will represent a zone and the color of a circle that will represent a beacon. So we create a, a new multi-device application. First uh, change the platform to Android and look for the fencing component in the tool palette and add the beacon zones fencing component. So first thing I, I'm going to do is to add zones and beacons information to the component. A good note before to start if is to fill up the base beacon identifier uh, that will be used later to, to help us to, to fill up the, the information of the of the beacons. As normally all the beacons we are going to use have the, the same identifier. So in this case I'm going to use the one for our beacons. Okay. So clicking on the sounds property, we open the the sounds editor. I'm going to add two sounds and th I'm going to set the beacon proximity property to immediate. This would mean that the zone events are going to be fired when a beacon inside them is on an immediate state. We can change the, the name for its zone. Okay. And for this sample I'm going to add one beacon for each zone. For example, this is going to be major one and minor one. And for the second zone we have another beacon. This one is major one and minor two. Okay, so this is the only thing we need to, to add for the beacons and zones. So when the component is enabled, we are going to get the the events for zones and beacons. So for so how it works, I'm going to add two rectangles, one for each zone. And two circles to represent the beacons. As I'm going to add a button to, to activate the the component at runtime. easier uh, work with the events 
uh, we have a property for zones and beacons where we can hold a reference to to an object on this case we I'm going to use them to to hold a reference to the rectangles and the circles in order on the events we have that information so for example on, on the create event for the form we access to to the zones and date and the beacons So just assigning the context property to the first rectangle and the second and the same for the beacons. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to write the the handlers for the events and change the the color. I'm going to change to green color when we enter to a beacon. Red color when we exit from a beacon. That will means that the the beacon signal has been lost and the same for the zones so for the beacon enter as we have the beacon item here we just need to cast the context property to the circle to get access to, to the circle that we have uh, attached on on the context property. The same on the zone exit. Now you see on red. And also for the zone and enter and zone exit events. Just changing the circle for the rectangle. Okay, so this is all that we need to run this demo application. So let's go see how it works on a device. Um, the two beacons are working right now, so I'm going to start. As you can see the two beacons have changed the color, and I'm near of the first beacon so the, the zone has been changed to green and I'm to move the 
the device to the second beacon. As you can see, the second song has changed to green and the first one to, to red. So that is simple and it's how it works. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to the beacon map fencing component. Um, this component allows us to create a map, placing beacons, finding zones and paths. This uh, is going to be used to fire events and also is going to be painted on a fire monkey component at runtime. The component holds a cath editor where we can use an image as base of, of the map, set the scale and configure all beacons setup. I'm using the beacon map fencing application a sample that came with the beacon fencing package. So to show the editor we just need to double click over the component and you will see an empty project. So the first thing we need to do is to create a map. We will see an square. We can change the background color, but the, the most useful thing is to have an image to to help us to to fill the the beacons locations and to be shown later in in the at runtime. So we are going to load. This is an image of the office. So once we have a background, we need to say the measure of the, of the map. We have a tool that's called Scale Map that allows us to change the the distance between two points. In this case, this wall on the top, we know that it's near of. 11 meters, so we just click on them and we place the the new measure. You can see the the map has been rescaled. Now it's time to add beacons. Using the beacon tool, we can add beacons around the office, as we have seen o on the previous presentation, uh, we need to make a field test in order to place correctly beacons. So I'm going to to place beacons as we have configured on on this office. Okay, so something like that. As you can see, we used to have beacons at the beginning, at, at the end of the corridors, and so on. Okay, we can set, we should set the properties for each beacon here. We can change the name and we can set up its identifier, major and minor. All those values are used later but the internal beacon manager to catch the signal of all of them. Okay, the map editor also allows us to define zones. We have the possibility to define rectangular zones, circular zones and polygonal zones. In order that when the fencing detects that we are over that zone and event will be, fi will be fired. Also the, the song will be highlighted on the painted 
runtime map. So to have some that just select the tool and add the zone, the same for the circular zones and for the polygonal zones we just click on the first point and add several points to create the polygonal form you need. All zones types have the same properties. We can change the color to distinguish them and also we can change the name. Finally, we uh, have also the path tool. This is important because we are going to provide uh, two positions. One will be the raw position and the second will be a position at just to the path. This will make that our position will be more stable. So we just need to add paths where we want to the where we want to see the position. For example on our office on the first video that you have seen on the presentation the path is something like that. The path also will be used to provide a minimal path from its point to another. That way a user can search for a point and will be addressed to it. Okay, something like that. Okay. All those components, beacons, zones and path points are automatically uh, added as point of interest. The component will provide a, a, a list with all the point of interest and we also have for all of them a description list. This description list can be used to add more information to a point in order that later we can search the, the point of interest list looking for one point. For example, we can say that this zone have developers That way, uh, when we search for developer, the this song will be find as one of the possible results. Okay, we can add several maps with this editor. For example, if we have floors in our setup environment. So on our case we have another floor. We just need to create a, a new map. The same steps. We load another image. And we also set the scale for 
this wall. <coughs> okay, so we also can have some beacons here. And when we are at a runtime, the map will change automatically depending on the beacons detected. So if we detect that we are near to the beacons of the second floor, the map zone will be the second map. Another thing we can do is connect two maps in order we can provide a path between them. So we need to add a path also on the second map. Sample. This is the corridor and this is the entrance. And on the first map <coughs> we're going to have also a path outside to the stairs. So using the connect map, map tool we're going to see both maps and we can connect two points of the path between those maps. We can do this uh, with all the floors or maps we need. This way we will <coughs> be allowed to, to create a path between the two floors. And that's it for the map editor. We close and we will be prone to <coughs> save the the project. If we open the map editor again, we will see the, the project. <coughs> the project can be saved also as an XML file. This allows us to have several configurations of the same map in order we can test several scenarios. Also on our demo we can load at runtime some maps in order to have the same application running as a generic application that can be used on different scenarios. Once the map has been finished, it's time to set the properties of particle filter. The MCL Monte Carlo location settings are preset to work in most of possible scenarios, but in any case, because you fight with a really adverse scenario, you want to save as much as battery possible, you want to adjust the scenario or just because you want to play, etc., we need to know how the options works and affects the MCL. Beacons to use number of beacons to be used in indoor positioning system. So in a scenarios like a corridor and rooms with three or four beacons will be enough, while in a big and empty scenarios will increase its number to six or eight. Particles number, the number of particles to be used in the MCL. So with a number around 300 particles we have enough for most of the scenarios but we have to know that the more number of particles greater is the precision but also the time of compute on computing, therefore the battery consumption. Movement standard deviation. At time to launch the particles prediction, we use the movement standard deviation in order to expand or collapse the point cloud of the MCL. So a cloud more expanded, more possible new location prediction in case of lost, but less stability and vice versa. Signal relative standard deviation. 
with the signal relative standard deviation will give more weight to closer beacons distance simulation. With the signal relative standard deviation will give more weight to the nearest beacon, so less value more weight to closest beacons. Mounting on threshold. It is a threshold where we consider that we start being in movement or stand still. A prep calculating give a threshold of 4 for Android and 2.5 for iPad, but that might change on depends of the device. Update interval. The refresh of the positioning system with a new value. Automatic calibration. We really recommend to calibrate each beacon separately with the system provided by the manufacturer company. So, just in the case this will not be possible, we can use an automatic calibration property that will remain active all time, trying to give an adaptive solution to each uncalibrated scenario. Calibration average. It is the percentage of the calibration TX power will use. We will ask the system to lead us from the office's entrance to the meeting room. In the way, we will change the recommended path for another one, so we will see how the system redirects us, offering an alternative route. Well, uh, as you can see, we set a large meeting room as our destiny, and we start to, to follow the path indicated in green color. But on the first cross, uh, we are going to take another path in order that you can see that the suggested path is going to be recalculated. Also, as you can see, the suggested path uh, disappears when the user go goes over there. And uh, is it? We arrive to the meeting room. Okay, on this example, we have set up uh, two maps, and we are going to see how, when we arrive to to the edge of the first map, is automatically changed to the, to the second map. Enjoy. Okay, here we are going to see how when we enter on the corridor, more or less at the middle of it, the map is going to change to the other part of the office. Okay. On this example, we will see the possibility of fencing in adjoining rooms. This is an unfriendly environment, and fencing company can manage it. Okay, here you can see that we have two adjoining rooms. I'm going to enter on the first one. This is the other room. And as you can see, the positing is on the first room. And now I'm going to enter to the second room. Where Torquil says hello. And now I'm going to exit and go to the end to the path. So that's it.
I've got Ivan on the line here for us to help with Q&A. Looks like he may have already been answered a couple of the questions we're doing along there. So what's the scalability of beacon fencing? How many beacons and moving agents can the approach deal with? Are there practical or theoretical limits? Well, uh, mm, at this stage, uh, there is no limit on beacons and mobile users. So the beacon signal is, are going to arrive to each dependent uh, Bluetooth device because they are just uh, emitting their advertised data. So all the, the devices that are looking for that will receive the information. So they're only going to receive signal from nearby beacons. So it's not going to... Okay, that makes sense. Now, you mentioned the importance of calibrating beacons, but um, can you go into more details about how to do that? Yeah. The, it's important to calibrate beacons to, to get the proper signal to make our algorithm work better. On the demos you have seen, the beacons are uncalibrated. So a calibrated uh, scenario will improve the, the signal. Uh, to calibrate the, the beacons, we just need to measure the, the RSI signal and change on the device, on the beacon device. Usually, we have a, a tool from the manufacturer to do it. Okay, so the, the manufacturer provides the tool. Uh, there's beacons from different vendors, and they have their own ways to calibrate them. Is there a reference RSA level for for beacons for one meter that reference beacons beacon fence knows about? So, uh, same 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 answer would be that you just have to calibrate each one individually. Uh, da -da. Is there utilities that could be could tell a user to turn left? Right, up, down, stairs, etc. Uh, we don't provide this at the moment, but uh, we can use the the events, the position events, as we know where we are in the map, and if we know that we are going to enter to to the stairs or something like that, we can provide. Yeah, that way the 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 address to the user, but it's not made automatically. So is it possible to turn this around so that the beacons are moving and then their, the receivers are local and, and stationary? Uh, no. Uh, this is pending to develop, and at the moment the beacons are are not moving, and the only device, the devices are, are the the moving, the moving devices. Yeah. I'm trying to think, you'd have to have a lot of devices probably to make that effective from a practical standpoint. So it'd probably be more practical just to have the beacons and then have a, each person with a device, unless you're trying to track a lot of people. But then you could just have. Uh, instead of using beacon fencing, it would just be a matter of um, having receivers just pick up the beacon. All those beacons getting close to me, and that would be the way you would know. But interesting mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. All right, if there's any other questions for Ivan, go ahead and, and put them in right now, and we'll get those answered for you. Uh, it's really interesting stuff working with the beacon fencing. And... Uh, I like the thing with, was it the Monte Carlo, I don't know exactly what it's called, MCL, with the idea of the particles and then predicting the potential of each location. So that, if I understand correctly, it's it gets that information from, uh, because it's connecting to multiple beacons, and then it uses that to figure out what's the most likely location that you're at, because there may be some inconsistencies from the signals from different beacons. Is that is that right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very cool stuff. Um, and if there's any other questions, go ahead and put them in right now. Uh, as we mentioned before, if you are interested in taking a look at beacon fencing, you can go into the Get It and download beacon fencing and start using it today for free. 
Uh, you can get a few beacons online. We had some links earlier for where to find beacons at. What's the minimum number of beacons you need to start working with beacon fencing? Do you know, Ivan? Well, uh, at least uh, four beacons, but uh, <clears throat> it depends on the mode we we are on, on the fencing component. We can start with just one beacon, but the position is going to show only changing from one beacon to the other. So for a, for a room with four beacons, I think should be enough. Okay. Four beacons. So there we go. You just need to get four beacons and you can download the beacon fencing uh, component from Get It and get started using beacons today. Very cool, neat technology. I think this is exciting to see uh, how easy the beacon fencing component makes it to work with this, but then it's interesting to understand all the, the intricacies and involved in how it works and such. So excellent. And it was nice to get a good tour of the uh, uh, Spain office from uh, Embarcadero Spain office over there with all the developers going. All right, well, thank you, Ivan, and thanks to everyone else over on the RTL team. And if you pass on our appreciation, that would be great. And thanks to everyone else for joining us today.